we all need to see that. We all need to see people that are in healthy love. We all need to know that we're worthy of, of experiencing love. And, and that's it. Hello, and welcome to the Creative Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Isolde Trachtenberg. In the show, my guests and I explore how we can use creativity to do our best work and live our best lives. I talk with authors, musicians, actors, scientists, and others who are all pushing the envelope to live fully, creatively, and authentically. Listen in to get the scoop on how you can do it too. Hi. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Creative Mindset Podcast. I'm Isolde Trachtenberg, and I am thrilled to be your host, and I'm even more thrilled to welcome the sophisticated psychos to the show, Kiriaki Chinakis and Nikki Scorpio. I'm so excited. Let me tell you about them. You're going to love this. The sophisticated psychos met in a recording studio in Hell's Kitchen in New York City. And Nikki Scorpio is a bay boy. He's a producer and a songwriter. And he met poet, actor, producer, and Detroit native Kiriaki after her international tour with 50 Cent and G-Unit. And the connection was a spark. It was instant. The two visionary artists <laughs> then created, you can hear some of the sound effects being provided by the Sophisticated Psychos. So they created the Sophisticated Psychos and are now on a mission. And this is so fascinating because we just started talking about this a little bit before the show started. And I can't wait to talk more about this in the show because it's, it's fascinating. They are on a mission to be role models and change perspectives on pop culture and mental health. So that's that's that in itself is amazing that people are self-aware enough to think about that so i'm excited to to delve into that but i also want to talk about the fact that their sound is hard hitting and it's self-produced trap with electronic beats it's raw edgy and it's honest subject matter and it deals with abuse wellness society culture and the sophisticated psychos are now they're focusing on spreading their music and messages of values and ethics through music and visual content i'm so thrilled to welcome both of you to the show oh, yay thank you thank you for yeah. having us my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. This is so wonderful because, I mean, you were both just on the show a few weeks ago, maybe maybe a few months ago now, uh, individually. So it's really exciting to, to me to get to talk to you together as a duo, as a couple who works together, who lives together, who loves together. The fact that you manage it and how you manage it, I, I can't wait to talk about that because there's something about that creative spark that drew you together and that keeps you growing. And that's amazing. Yes. Every yeah. moment, every moment, I'm feeling <laughs> it right now. And we're both Scorpios at the same time. So, there, so there's that. Oh, my stars. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's uh that's that's quite the recommendation two Scorpios getting together. That's uh that's quite something. So, uh let me ask you first. I you met in a studio, which yes. I think is telling. What about that? What about who you were drew you as artists and as people together? I'd love it if you'd talk a little bit about that. Okay. Well, I would like to start with okay, a straight course. shooter. So, I was um in the studio um and I was recording Paris Fashion Week. I just got back from Paris and I had an amazing time. It was like creme de la creme with like the president at the time of um, Chanel, John Galantic. We had like breakfast before. And then we, we were at the Chanel show sitting with the Chanel family. And like we were just having such a great time and my visuals are just going off bonkers right now and I'm a poet so I was so inspired that I, I wrote a piece called Paris Fashion Week and I came back and um I so everything was lined up it was like I I haven't been in that studio for a while I wasn't recording for a while I had I flew in my producer from Colorado it was scheduled like um it was very specific and um and I, I've recorded in that studio before many times, but it was a long time since I've been there, like years. And so uh, on the chance of being there and recording Paris Fashion Week, put Paris Fashion Week, let's go. And then, um, you know, Nikki can share with you, but 
he I guess he came into the studio a bit later and he heard me like saying some things like maybe Paris Fashion Week. And well, I didn't know any of this at the time, but now I very much know Nikki's really big into fashion. So I think maybe his ears heard me saying some fashion stuff and maybe that intrigued him with like, yo, who's that voice behind the door talking about fashion? Oh, I'll take it from you. I'll take it from you. Okay, so... So you watch movies, we watch movies as kids and like we think like it can happen and then you get older and you think like all oh, that doesn't happen in real life, but then it does. So how we both met was very cinematic. So I had a studio, I had a studio within this um, area. There were three studios and and I, I walked in at an abnormal time, um, heard, heard her doing spoken word poetry and was like, oh, that's cool. I haven't ever heard a spoken word poetry artist in this studio as many cool, talented and successful artists as, as I've heard. And so my mind intuitively, which I'm, I'm really, really, really big into going with my intuition and my gut and my heart and just like leading with that said, leave the door open and you two will meet and, and something will happen. And so, and so I, I did that and my producer came in and was like, yo, why, why is the door open? And I said, hold on a second, I've got a plan. Okay. And, <laughs> I love it. And sure enough, I heard her door go. And, and, and I'm like, all right, play our song. So he plays our song and she walks into the studio and my hat flies off my head and I fell out of my seat and uh, like <laughs> wow. straight out of a movie, straight out of a movie, except there was no music playing um, except, except for my <laughs> mind at the time, but it didn't match the, the romance and the spark. Um, and then from there, basically the lo the short story is is that she needed to after I waited for her for a long long time, um, she was doing an intensive fourteen hour a day acting class with a very very prestigious um, teacher. I waited and and kept going in in New York as a Bay Area native. And then as soon as she got finished with this class, she said, "My team needs me in Los Angeles." And so I basically long again like edited version i can always sell the full version but um tell the and, full version no it's okay <laughs> well, well, well basically like i was in the i was in the bay area i was visiting my family and and she had an opportunity to perform and so um she was like do you want to come perform in los angeles and i hadn't really when you're a Bay Area native, like you, Los Angeles and the Bay Area have a weird, weird like thing that goes on, um, like a weird rivalry or something. And I, I love California in general, but um, so so I so she flew me graciously, which says a lot, um, especially after I had been involved with the, uh, the woman who had no idea where money came from. So this is like this cultured, beautiful, powerful boss lady. That for me it was art. There was an attraction, but I'm you know like there it was it was art it was we can do something amazing and and original and 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 make something and so i went to los angeles hung out with her and i'm seeing this girl that i had no idea i just knew that she had done a lot of different things and had had a cool career in life and i found out that she was self-made and and she hung out with all these different really really original and cool artists from all different forms of art and and i caught i you know, I've been living in New York for six or seven years and, and I was like, man, this weather feels nice. This is cool. So I packed, I came back to New York. The energy was a little bit stagnant personally for me. So I told my team, I'm like, yo, I'm going to Los Angeles with or without you. Um, I packed all my stuff into a golden minivan. We called the Golden Stallion, drove across from New York to California in two days um, wow. and, and took a chance with someone where we weren't even in a relationship yet. I had no clue. I was very, very introverted and closed up. Um, we went on a journey, got involved in Hollywood and anyone who's been involved in Hollywood knows it can be a, a very interesting uh, ocean to, to, to swim through. And there's a lot of different creatures, good and dark. Um, and so we're, we're back here in New York. We had a lot of great experiences, built a strong community, learned some lessons and, um, Hold on. And and so, you know, we're back here in New York and being being by coastal and being able to travel is good. Um, you know, and, and we're doing amazing things in New York right now. We've really been building the sophisticated psychos experience show. Um really, really been building ourselves separately and, and now now what we're doing 
within all the art that we're creating is again, it doesn't matter the shade of your skin. It doesn't matter how you identify what you believe or what you don't. It's all about connectivity and, and, and having fun and enjoying life. Kiriaki has an amazing new single out. We're just, yeah, we're, we're making the best of this wild time. Angels and rainbows, angels and rainbows. <laughs> Wow. So much, so much, so much. I, I have so many, I have so many questions. Okay. Okay. So, so those are intense. So yes, no yes, no, 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 I, I actually no apologies needed. There's so much, uh, you know, it's, it's so amazing to me to listen to you. It, it, it almost tumbled out of your mouth. Like you couldn't help it. You know, it's it, the, the obvious, emotion and connection that you two share is is plain for anybody who's who's got ears to hear so <laughs> so I, I i really love i really no seriously it was just like and and then this happened and then this happened and this and it's not i, I i'm gonna say it's not just your intensity as scorpios i think some of this obviously is the intensity of the connection you two share and the feelings you have for each other which uh, i think is yeah, so we, great we weren't we thank you we weren't in we both weren't in a relationship for a very long time i've i've always made myself um unavailable romantically with 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 an open heart still at the same time but i i witnessed at a young age my grandparents teaching about the power of love and and i always always was like i want to have a woman in my life a partner um who natu naturally um who, who is a natural you know powerful person um, and, and to, and to be that in the world and to, and to show that in the world, because thankfully I've, I've seen enough people with healthy love that it's, it's just like, people need to, we all need to see that. We all need to see people that are in healthy love. We all need to know that we're worthy of, of experiencing love and, and that's it. Absolutely. And not just worthy of it. We deserve it. You yes. know, we deserve to have people in our lives who want the best for us, who love us, who care for us. And, and it, 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 you know, that part of it is so, um, I think it's missing in, uh, in a lot of people's lives. And so remembering and reminding people, and I think that's what you two do. It, interestingly, having been part of a sophisticated psychos experience or two, that's what you do when you're, when you're creating a show, you're, you're reminding every, everybody who's in the audience, everybody who's a musician or part of the production team, that they're part of something bigger. And that something bigger is, has a foundation of love, which I just think is amazing. So I, I would love love for you both to talk about that a little if you would when you when you develop a sophisticated psychos experience when you produce it what are your thoughts as you decide this is what i'm going to do how do you make it work and do you do that together or do you tend to one of you bring something to the other and then the other one builds on it and it's one at a time okay i think the producer of this is going to speak right now darling so okay i just so yeah and i just want to say like if there's a fire truck or something and it's like i'm in mid <laughs> i'm just gonna stop and lull and then just pick it back up okay okay nikki i think maybe for you if you want to take that route i close the windows too but okay. um yeah so um so what place. happens is um it like, it comes to me. It's just like, it comes inside of me. It's like a full on vessel spirit that just illuminates my whole entire like soul, like the whole outer layer from within. And then when that magnetizes and I align on like this symmetrical level, that's just infinite glory of possibilities and color. I am then my thought form process and my openness just extends and it's whatever's in front of me right there whatever comes to my instincts to my mind my heart and my soul so if i'm like oh abigail she does sound bowls like i'm a ripple effect i, I told her the mission and the story how i sponsor a family and uh Rendell and era and her family in the philippines for 17 years and how um She's from the Philippines and she has Tibet and meditation bowls that were attuned to her specifically. And I met her through my Kundalini journey and um, she ended up living like on the same block as me. It was insane. And so she gifted me all these um, 
moments of her time and her her life experiences and really enhanced me as a as a woman to heal from inside and um she and I, you know, sent people to her and she does these sound bowl meditations and sound is a vibration and it heals. So how we speak, when we speak, uh, the, the, um, you know, the length and, um, you know, slowing down and it coming in, it's just like a process. So when, um, you know, she's doing the sound healings, um, I'm like, this would just be the cherry on the icing of the cake. So like she fit in that moment, but it, she wasn't the first on the bill. Like she came like four or five after I had my solid um, go-to foundational people. You, I invited you to co-produce it with me because I love your mindset, your skill set, um, your attributes and how you, you are. Yeah. Just like, like you're just this flower of growth that shines so bright and and so for me it's like oh I want to befriend Isolda and I want to build this connection that we found in our hearts of love of stand-up comedy voiceovers and podcasting so that you know you were on the bill to do to shine your light and do whatever you wanted on the stage I was open for it and we have our communication back and forth and then like I want Nikki to perform some songs. He's doing his solo EP. And so I want him independently do some songs. I'm going to do a stand-up bit. Uh, a girlfriend of mine, Natalia, she plays the guitar. Now she's in California. She's traveling. So um, she she was in the first show. Her um, partner, Pedro, was in the second show. And um, Joey Williams, who's my friend from the Blind Boys of Alabama, he has multiple Grammys and he was the youngest person ever to be um, given a Lifetime Achievement Award um, by the Grammys. So that's pretty epic. And he was in, you know, our, our first show and, and he's, he's a part of them all, which is awesome. <laughs> and um, so, so that kind of collaborative thing happened where I just like went to my friends and went to people who interest me and it was an invitation of an openness to say hey like I have this idea are you interested and I cultivate it in a way that makes them and I tailor it to for for it to excite them I I, I make it so it's like it's kind of like it's like a diamond and then shining all like uh, like multiple areas like four to six or whatever how many different areas to so that so I'm a ripple effect to have uh, you shine and feel even better about yourself, something proud, something to create and work on and, and being honored and valued, you know, from the ground up. So for an artist's perspective, that's that's what's really important for me. And that's how it all comes together. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was in a I was I was, um, you know, at 55th and 8th living across the street from stu- um, the old studio 54. And um, that's where, you know, um, one of our places uh, was at the time and uh, it was just amazing. And, um, and um, while I was there, you know, uh, Abigail was a block away and I was like totally where I was. And actually it was, it was in September and I actually dismantled a, 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 a personality character, character trait that I embodied at a um, stop show image within my mind where then I took on ideals and created new firing and wiring systematics within my own brain function and to be entitled with ego and to have these like bars and standards of certain things, which made it very challenging and difficult in my um, life because um, I'm controlling and like not evolving with you have, consciousness. You have to um, We're all in n- no, no, I'm talking about when I was like um, you a to. teenager. Yeah, you mm. have yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. and then yeah. So anyway, um, <laughs> um, so with that being said, um, I was talking to Ab- Abigail, and she's like, "Yo, did you eat?" And I'm like, "No, nah. like that's what I was gonna be doing." She's like, "Oh, do you want to go eat?" And I'm like, "Yes." And she was so surprised. I said, "Yes, like let's let's go eat." And we sat face to face and we talked about some um stuff that I just kind of mentioned to you. And right then and there, it just shifted from I'm not enough to this lower vibration to 
um, you know, I am enough. And we were smiling and laughing. And I was like, oh my God, like I'm doing this show and I would love for you to be in it. And she didn't understand it at all. Like at, <laughs> she just showed up and I directed her and she just did her thing. And then afterwards she like really got it and understood. And she was in the second one and like she's on board and stuff. And it's so cool because I have um, Abigail Divine opening the show with her um, Tibetan meditation sound bowls. And it's just, it's so, so beautiful. And um, then, you know, so that's, that's kind of like the talent overall. And then it gets more fine tuned for the nuts and bolts, which is, you know, having the platform and, and the space and then options of the spaces and picking and tailoring aesthetically, which would be the best for the vibes of a, you know, non Broadway, Broadway, um, the sophisticated psychos experience with theater seats and, you know, it being like Grecian style and very like classy and ro like a romantic, um, like lounge kind of cool vibe. So, um, you know, gratefully I was able to find the space for us and the pit underground, they give an opportunity for talent and ideas to sell out the, um, sh stages. And so then it goes on to being something, you know, like the ripple effect to keep on going. So starting literally at the ground up from the stage. That was such a beautiful, incredibly detailed sort of description of the experience. And, and it's really interesting to me to listen to what you're saying and, and sort of hear the mental ticks in the producer's mind. Well, I need the talent. Well, I need the space and I need, you know, I need the, 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 the people working tech and all that. And you just sort of slid into it and did it. And it's interesting to me that you, it sounds like once you moved up into that next vibrational plane, that some of that flowed more easily. Would you say that's true? Oh yeah. I was just in action. I just, I was just in action. I, I did what I could do. And, um, it was really cool to have people on group emails and chats and introduce artists with artists and collaborate. It was always a passion and dream of mine ever since I was really little, um, to, you know, I'm like, cause I was imagining when I was really little and I wasn't famous yet, you know, and I was like, um, you know, if someone who was famous, like gave me an opportunity or someone who was famous, just like gave me an, that would be like a dream come true. And I'm like, I want to do that when, when I'm in that position. And then it's like, and then I'm like waiting and waiting to get in this position, like different variations in my life. And then it's like, oh yeah. Okay. I created a, well, Nikki and I, we created, um, a web series through the union and gave, you know, these actors and producers and engineers and mixers and editors and writers opportunities to create. And so I've been doing that. It's, it's really important for me to um, give people opportunities. And I know what it's like to want and desire opportunities. And, um, you know, it's a fine line of you know, doing that with honor and then not taking advantage of being vultures of, you know, people's dreams and vulnerability and desperation, because I know from experience that's happened as well. So to be able to, um, you know, give people those kind of brilliant opportunities, it makes me feel really good. And it's like, we're creating as a, um, collective in mm -hmm. life and we're befriending each other and like we're all going to be in different journeys and we're like, yeah, I was in that show of yours or you were in, you were in that show of mine. Yeah. You know, and, and that's kind of really, that's a neat, that's a neat, fun feeling. It is. It is. And it's also an enriching collaboration. And, and the two of you have something like that just in your watching your interactions is a delight because you, you seem to collaborate with one another in everything, not just the sophisticated psychos, but everything. Nikki, I was wondering if you could speak to that a little bit about how that, that kind of flow seems to really go for the two of you in, in your collaborative efforts. Right. Yeah. So like we, we as humans, we have different skills and, and different things that we focus on our minds work in different ways. Right. So like, for example, I'm more on the introverted side, meaning that um, I'm, I'm a lot more in thought, um, observing, um, studying things, um, I have very loyal friends. I have a smaller circle than, um, you know, someone who's more outgoing might typically have. Um, 
whereas Kay is is kind of a mixture of the both and and it's really her spirit you know where she has this innocence and this brilliance at the same time and originality and and she creates excitement so for me a lot of the times I'm more behind the scenes because I'm observing people and their characters and how they speak to other people and and how they treat other people the things that they think no one else sees that define who they are so that you know everything that we're doing um, regardless of how of of the time frame it's it's done authentically you know so for example for this show um, we've I, I kind of visually introduced Kay to um, Carol Burnett and to say that you know like a variety show is really I feel like really needed right now and and I really feel like you know a strong woman who's funny who's naturally funny who's intelligent and again who who isn't going out there doing crazy things and having publicists strategically break up their marriage and relationship to get more views and then create like a product line out of that craziness um, that 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 we've been calling normalcy until thank God that we're trapped um, actually untrapped we're untrapped inside <laughs> and so you know like she she's been building this and 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 again we coming to New York um, it's there's a really really good energy here there's a really good um, shift in 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 things and and people are way more supportive like you hear you hear how people cheer at seven o'clock like where we are in, in in the lower east like it's it's you think we're at like the world cup or something like that <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing mm -hmm. um and so you know we have our community that that we've aligned with um we're both way more intuitive based um, but it's, it's nice to be able to have, even if you're a solo act, it's nice to have someone in your circle that, that offers something like, for example, if, if you're really talented, but you're not outgoing so much, mm -hmm. like having someone in your circle to say, Hey, listen, like you meet people, like you make an introduction for me when there's money made off of that, like I'm taking care of you. And, and, and that's, and, you know, and, and, and there's a healthy thing that's created from that. Um, you know, so for me, I see, I see Kay's vision and, you know, I see how men can be. Um, I see how women can be. I see how human beings can judge. Um, and so for me, I always want to, you know, to show people again, like the connectivity and the beauty and the beauty and the brilliance of who she is. Um, and, and that's all, and that's all done through love, you know? So, you know, that's, that's really how we, how we operate at the core. And that foundation seems to allow a springboard for, for both of you, you know, in your working relationship and your, I don't know how much you want to talk about your personal lives, but in your working relationship, when you work together, do you do you each work on your own thing and then bring it to the other, or do you work at the same time and develop an overlap? How does that work? How do you we've done all, of, all of that? We've, uh -huh. we've done all of that. It, it zigs and zags. Yeah, yeah, we've done all of it. It just all crosses over. Um, I guess the there was um you know from the beginning, and we had some ideals and uh, you know visions and. Uh, organize organizations of how things were going to be. Well, I know in my mind I did. Probably in his mind he did as well. And um, you know, then we were working towards those things. And then so we did an album together. And then you know we were on this journey, um, you know, with angels and just like spirituality and just uh, really really cool like words. Like uh, you know, Nikki's an amazing genius songwriter, and. Um, he wrote all my lyrics for um, the first album we did together. And um, I have some favorite verses of mine um, that I like, well, I'll just bust out, you know, cause it's a part of the collective of TSP. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then, and then through a lot of like, um, like a lot of the immaturity and the learning and growing part of not knowing and frustrating of wanting it to be a certain way and just going again against against the um, evolution and going against what nature wanted for us because we were just so focused on our visions which is great too you know because like you have to have a focus and 
and go, but then you, you tweak and you work those things and you, you, you know, you, you pivot left, you pivot right. And then you learn to do it more graciously, you know, (laughs) and, uh, you learn to communicate healthier and, um, to each other. And, um, first and foremost to ourselves to bring more grace, peace, and harmony, which is a continuous practice. So through, through that, since from like 2012, 2014 to, um, you know, last year around July 9, 2019, um, that's when we, we had an editing bay for a while and then we decided okay the editing bay is done and um we let we live separately and so he was able to focus on his stuff I was able to focus on my stuff it was like putting the cart before the horse and he was able to focus on his stuff and I focused on my stuff and there is very emotional and but you know we were dismantling the um the the unfiring and unwiring things that didn't serve us and allowing space because we were both like have these amazing energies and everything so we were allowing you know space and um other f- energies and friendships and focuses just to do what we want to do without relying or you know being that voice for one another just some silence some some deep solitude and silence and through that deep solitude and silence but always being connected of course but you know you're only as strong as your weakest link so we really had to be very courageous to not be around each other as much as we wanted to be to Mm -hmm. not be around each other so we could develop that within our own selves to have new strong um like stable grounds as individuals Mm -hmm. and then come together again so um so we did that and that was from July till, um, you know, what, like six months or something. And then, um, and then, um, when the, when the, um, quarantine happened, I was in solitude for two weeks and then Nikki came, um, well, it's going to be five weeks. So he came five weeks ago and this is the first time we spent this much time together, literally like we haven't left the door. So, so we've really been able to iron out those weakest, weakest links and cracks and rise above like, um, um, kesianetics, like, um, uh, epi- epigenetics. So not the genetics, not, not the geons, not the, not the, um, the genes, but above them. So we are able, epigenetics. So we are able to go above our own DNA levels and circumstances to create a new. And like now we're just like at this higher vibration and cloud for one another, which is really cool. And, and we acknowledge that. And then we acknowledge when we're not there. So then it's, it's a, it's a, it's a continuous practice, basically. Definitely. I want to, I want to say, I want to say, so to kind of like add briefly to that, like there's, there's always, there's always forgiveness and there's always a remembering and, and an appreciation of who we both are at the core. Um, there's no, there's no perfect relationship. And so, you know, like to case point, it's been, it's been good because we both learned so much. So many people get into relationships and they have families and they have kids and they think it's always going to get better. And it, and, and it only gets better at that point where you start being like, all right, I got to own up to the things that I'm doing. I need to take responsibility for myself instead of blaming other human beings. And that's, what's really cool about what's going on right now. So, you know, we not only separately are really, really more powerful at manifesting things when we have that clear space and that positive energy around us. So we're able to manifest literally like out of nothing except for a thought and an intention, um, great creations and amazing people you know um but we're we're also like she's talking about epigenetics is like we're breaking we're breaking the patterns of our families we're breaking the patterns that we were taught and and it's it that's the world that we're going into so everything that that we're talking about that sounds out there is is now becoming in there and is now the way like science is science is changing so much so that it's almost more spiritual than spirituality um, and, and, and it's an amazing time. And so everything that we're doing is K is showing people where people are like, I want to, like, I don't have someone in my life. I don't have someone in my corner who, who knows 
about supplements or about health. You know, like I don't have someone in my life, like for example, you know, me as a, as a guy, like I was raised a lot, like by a lot of women. So like, I don't, I don't connect with guys and there's certain things that I don't know. So there's always things that we can share. And so we're sharing and we're showing and we're teaching and it's, and it's human. It's not, again, we're not like a perfect Instagram couple that you find out later is like, mm -hmm doing like youtube hey guys we broke up like weird like weird stuff like we're we're being very <laughs> like i don't know how many people really study like how a popular culture is but it's not it's not popular anymore because <laughs> because people are seeing through it which is great uh we're we're showing how human our life is man and and and, and if you can if you can connect and relate to that and if you can laugh at your life and say you know what like I love my life regardless. I'm going to stop comparing myself and comparing my life and comparing my relationship. I'm actually, I'm actually good. Like I'm actually going to be happy and, and, and my kids are going to, to have that. And then we're going to be self-reliant. And, and when we're self-reliant and when we're self-loving, then everything, everything clicks, man. And so that's, that's what we're teaching and what we're showing. Incredible. So, wow. Okay. Let's talk, let's unpack that a little bit. The idea of self-reliance and self-love, and I'm going to add to that self-knowledge because I think self-awareness is so important, you know, like knowing that you don't know and being willing to accept that you don't know uh, something yes. to ask the question, you know? So, yeah. so, so can you describe for me either or both of you what that process has been like for you as you go from i don't know to i'm more aware now and now oh, because man. i'm more aware i can grow i would I'm love give, yes i'm going to give a brief example and then i would, I would so being in a being in a relationship right so this lovely powerful person that i'm that i'm interactive with on many different levels has conversations with me does things i have conversations the conversations um you know let's say for example a conversation gets misinterpreted and that turns into an argument or a disconnect and then and then i go to you know where i go to when when i was like x amount of years old and and somebody did x thing to me and and, and now like i'm you know emotionally reliving that right mm -hmm. so so in that moment i can breathe and i can stop and i can just say what did I do? What, where, where am I, where am I making a choice that is disempowering me? And, you know, and then I can go even deeper and say like, how am I doing this in other areas of life? And, 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 and that's, that's where there's transformation where there's beauty. And I come back after being frustrated and being able to actually clear it. And then I learn something and I grow from it. And now I'm at this place now where people come at me from all different walks of life and angles. And I'm like emotionally bulletproof. So that's, I mean, that's one example. And maybe you can, you know, okay, you can say for you what it is. Um, respond to what you just said or repeat, repeat no. the question or what was that? What was well, the question? The question was really, it's the process of what, what Nikki and I think you also were describing this idea of, of growth being, that you start from an, I don't know, I don't know, and I have to get some awareness that I don't know. And then once I have that awareness, I can build on that and then I can grow. And so Nikki just gave his example about repeating, you know, I call it playing an old tape. You know, you're, you're repeating a pattern from when you were really young and going back and saying, okay, uh, this is something that I don't have to hold on to anymore and I can embrace something new. And I was wondering if you have that in your process as an artist and as a person that I, what, what happens for you? And then I'd love to talk to the two of you and how you relate to each other about it. So, I mean, okay. So are you familiar with Hay House? No. Okay. So I, you need to tune in. It's today. It's been going on for the last three days. It goes on for another week. It's called Hay House. It's uh, mm -hmm. you can heal yourself summit dot com and it's free. You just put in your email mm -hmm. and they have like 10 videos and uh, audios a day. And it's Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Um, 
Bruce Lipton and um, all these amazing scientists and uh, Deepak was the first day and this woman Gabriella and she's talking about being a superhuman and you know it, it, um, there's this guy David Hamilton and yesterday he was talking about the heart connection and that he talks about this Tibetan um, meditation that has out of everything has been the best for him. So I like, I've, I've heard that meditation. I've done it before. I really attuned to it. I really like it. I really like the, um, Tibetan way. Mm -hmm. Um, he's bringing science into it. Yeah. He's bringing science into it and talk, it talks about how it reduces inflammation and, mm -hmm. and, and has other psychological effects on it. Oh, meditation absolutely does. Absolutely Greg, does. Greg Braden. Yeah. Greg, Greg Braden. Um, was talking about that and he was talking about the um, four there's 40,000 neurons in the heart and so it's not just like your brain it's you know your heart so so David Hamilton yesterday was talking about taking your finger you know um, and people can do it any which way and you touch the middle of your heart and you just breathe and and that's how you connect the the brain to the heart the brain to the heart and however long it takes you and you can just put your heart there. So I've been meditating like that just, um, you know, multiple times just since yesterday. And it's, it, and it's been, I, it's been able to get me from my head, um, quickly to my heart because I've been processing and realizing that before, because of trauma and, and everything and being numb and grass and not being able to be connected to and knowing if I'm connected to my emotions, being confused of what emotions I was connected to. So I feel by touching my, my hand in the middle of my heart and just sitting there breathing and just, um, and he even says take slower breaths, but, but being there breathing and just like with my hand on my heart and then connecting it visually like tap, it's so simple just to connect it in a simple way like the mind to the heart the energy of the mind to the heart and i can feel my heart beating and i and i and that all that stuff that's tension around my thyroid all that stuff that's tension it just kind of has been melting away and mm -hmm. it's been really beautiful and it's a graceful place to go to and then another um thing to take it a step further is the tibetan meditation where it's like he talks about the inner critic and being able to have solitude and, and silence that inner critic. And it's basically through this Tibetan meditation, um, um, th these words. And I mean, I can paraphrase, but I, I recorded it because just so I can just practice and, and learn it myself. But so what I did was I was in the bathroom and I was having this heady stuff going on and these neurons of thoughts and it was like irritating and this irritation and so I was, you know, feeling pretty good and everything, but that irritation was there. So I said, um, I love my irritation. I, I, I forgive um, the person who's irritating me. I forgive, um, you know, um, this irritating feeling. Uh, I love this irritating feeling. And it was just giving it, um, I surrender to this irritating feeling. And, and by saying those things, I um, caught myself in in a mirror and in, in a new way and I caught myself in the mirror and I was really and I saw myself as that really joyful person in my in my smile my lips and my eyes and I and I felt really great because and well because I realized like that irritation feeling that irritation person that I'm thinking about that irritation within me was was me all along and and me giving it that love and compassion and that care to just say exactly what it was and and like mend it and to so then it's like planting a seed and nourishing nourishing so i'm just going to keep nourishing and he says it takes about three to four weeks to really you know boom so but 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 yeah it's 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 a gentle process but that that's something that's helped me um in 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 recent and um so i'm kind of really honing in the things that i've known since i was a kid and then the things i've heard over the years i'm really right now honing it in and really um Apply, uh, practicing, ap applying the practicing and, and um, going to be that solitude, strong voice to share 
what I know to be true thus far from a concrete rooted level and be that ripple effect and person people can lean on and come to and, you know, be in a place where I once was and um, be able to really be an impact for their healing journey, holding space for them through, you know, my sound and vibration. That's, it's interesting to me to hear you say that you want to provide a root or be rooted in order to heal yourself, but also to, to be part of the process of other people's healing journey through sound and vibration. When you two collaborate musically, when you collaborate spiritually, is that the process you're going through? Is it, is it, how, describe that if you can, how do the roots of your foundation as, a, as people and as the sophisticated psychos or as a duo in general, mm -hmm. how do they allow for that growth and how do they make room for it as you, as you heal yourselves and also as you reach out to the world at large to heal others? Okay, that's a, that's a great question. So for example, let's talk about this amazing new song that's out, Angels and Rainbows, right? So, mm -hmm. so Kay had this idea that she had recorded um, when we were brand new to moving back to New York. Mm -hmm. um, and, and she recorded it basically with a very simple, like, I think there was just like a drum, there was nothing. And, and it was, again, it was poetry more so. And, and so she recorded it and mm -hmm. it, I basically, I had it for a while and, and I was trying to play with it and I couldn't catch it because I knew the sound how it was supposed to be like mm -hmm. very high energy more electronic um you know like we're talking about like dubstep music and 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 drum and bass and like international kind of music and and that that wasn't something at the time that because i was i was very new as a producer so naturally on on my journey right like i i was able to sit down in a clearing um and there was really good energy between us and 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 i was also at a place where um well i i was basically here cuz it's still fresh and 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 so i found because technology is where it's at if if you're if you're doing anything to express yourself right now this is the best time to do it it's it's so cool how available um help is as as an artist um you know like to basically you can collaborate with yourself so and when i say that i mean like i found out about um through through um a website because there's all these rent to own websites there's all of these websites where they basically make it so that um because they're charging five thousand dollars for something that really shouldn't be charged five thousand dollars so they're they're making this technology more affordable and accessible to people, um, which is why you're hearing so much eclectic music and, and creations now. And so um, I I just I had I had a program called um, uh, called um, out output and and I plugged it in arcade and I plug and 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 I played it and I just caught it and because I've been more open to educating myself, I was on YouTube, basically teaching myself how to do what you hear as angels and rainbows, because it was also recorded. It was literally, it was recorded under a blanket, um, <laughs> which, which, <laughs> I love that. which I think is so cool, which mm -hmm. I think is so cool. And at the same time, we were, we were just like kids recording music, not really like realizing you know, when you're on a condenser mic and under a blanket, it's not, it's not exactly the greatest way to record a song. And and again, because of technology, I could rec I could you know remove all of the background noise and sounds and, and, and patience. And he has a oh lot my, of patience. Oh okay. <laughs> also, learned by being in this relationship Jeez. and by doing the spiritual work. Um, for anyone who's introverted, listen listen to audio books or look up books for the power of introvert and just realize how great we are um in our superpowers and so yeah so i definitely spent hours and hours learning 
um, I, I gave her like 18 different mixes of this song and lucky mix number 18 <laughs> made it. Um, so that's, you know, everything, everything is correlated, you know, um, the way, the way that we are in our relationship is how we are with, within our work ethic and, and how we are within knowing ourselves. And to your point as older, like by me knowing myself and knowing that, that I, that it's okay that I'm, I don't go out and have a million different friends and I'm, it's okay that I'm not a social butterfly. I can have and create art that, that speaks volumes and speaks for itself and, and, and have that trust um, in knowing of the direction where I'm headed and, and always keep an open heart. So I've, I've always appreciated and respected Kiriaki as an artist. I think that she's original. Um, I feel like originality needs to be not only nurtured, but told constantly um, that, that it's, it's cool and it's amazing that you're unique and, and that people aren't gonna get it until they're all copying it, you know? And so um, for me, for me again, like, yes, yes, I, I, I'm a man in love. Like I, I appreciate her and, and, you know, like we have this amazing committed relationship first and foremost, you know, I think as an artist, she's amazing. And, and, you know, I think when people listen to the song Angels and Rainbows, they'll hear her spirit. Even if you don't like the music, you'll still smile and laugh. And that's a mission accomplished. And, and she's doing something super positive to celebrate um, all of these people that are basically keeping our planet running right now. And you know what's amazing? I, I, when you were talking, I'm like, yes, yes, she's incredible. Yes, she's, yes, yes. <laughs> and so, so I had a lot of times that I wanted to say that, but I didn't want to talk over you. <laughs> but at the same time, here's something, here's something that I think is really interesting. Like, um, I listened to to the song like five times in a row, and Woo! Rich Rich comes into the apartment from he was downstairs. He was no, I think he was on the roof. He was juggling. That's what he's been doing with his time. He's up on the roof right now I juggling. Love that. Um, getting some vitamin E. <laughs> exactly. Juggling. So I'm it literally. Okay. Yeah, no, he's literally juggling. He also he's he's a he's a he's an entertainer like the rest of us, but he's yeah, also yeah. he's also introverted. So he he definitely needs his alone time. Um, but he comes in and I'm like dancing up a storm, and he's like. Who is this? I'm like, is this Kiriaki? And he's like, no way. So then we're both dancing. <laughs> it was really oh, cool. great. So um you guys need to do a little video and send it to me, like a 15, 30 second clip. I'll repost it on the Instagram. Um, we need uh, to do we need to do like a rainbows and angels dance challenge. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll talk to him and see if he's willing to do that. He's some I'm juggling willing to dance at the drop of the hat. Juggling. Yeah. Oh my god, have, have him do time. it juggling. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to him. That'll be fun. Um, yeah, we're actually yeah. making a music video. Nikki's editing the music video this week, and we're releasing it. Um, it's it's short clips of videos and uh -huh. um, photos. So yeah, I mean, if he wants to be in the video, we, <laughs> I'll let him know. Like a, right in. Send like a fifteen sec second like juggle thing <laughs> to the song. That'll be that'll be awesome. I'll let him yeah. know. I'll let him know when he comes. Well, after this, I'll let him know. Right now. Right now, I can't leave because we're still chatting. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, so Kiriaki, we talked a little bit about the production of it, and I think that is really cool to know. And I'd also love, what message do you want it to send? Like, how did you come up with with the idea, and what is the goal? What is the? I know you said that it's just to be out there, but but is there something more? Is there what what is it that you want the song to say to the people who listen to it? Well, the thing is, I mean. Um, you know, from from the root of it, I feel like it's a full circle with with Nikki and I in a time of celebration, angels and rainbows. And I just really feel like it's who I am, like and I feel it's, you know, who we all are. I feel like that's the purpose of life. It's just rainbows, um, angels and rainbows, you know, and I always like my birthday being 11, 11. I always knew like, um, you know, um, one of God's messengers. I know we all are. And we're sharing this collective consciousness through sound and vibration. And so, you know, being angelic and speaking the words of angels through being poets and musicians, songwriters, just all sorts of artists. I feel like during this time of the pandemic, I feel like the whole world turned into artists. <laughs> Absolutely. Because, because I know artists right now, I mean, I can't speak for all artists because I know a lot have 
tours and schedules and, and um, ego plans of their destination of just like, this is going to be my big release or my big break and, or I'm just getting married and, or having a child. So, I mean, a lot of people are, you know, really conflicted and mentally in, in different emotional places, especially with, you know, everyone being affected and then intimately if, if the, someone within the family is affected, um, not even on, you know, on devastation levels, but in the terms of like, you know, not having the coronavirus and being responsible by being indoors and respecting that as a community and having that responsibility and having a stable ground to be in your home and create, I think is a time to go in and make sure your home is something that you want to be living in, even if you're not wanting to be living in your home, creating a home within your own home, because I feel like we all need to do this inner, inner deep um, work of healing um, before we can go out and be together again. I notice in my emails that I'm writing back and forth, the way I'm communicating with people, it's just, it's really breaking new ground and new territory. But like Bruce Lipton says, it's like, you can't just do it for three weeks and like, oh, it's a bounce back. No, it's like, it, it's, this is like, it's, it's going to take dynamic uh, shifts and change. So so primarily the the vision and the of the song and the message is you know in honor of um the ripple effect of how you can um never meet someone in in your lifetime but by the power of yes or saying something by doing an act of kindness and out of act of love it's a ripple effect in the universe and so renalyn who i've been sponsoring for 17 years that i haven't met yet her her two brothers her whole family um i feel you know she's a ripple effect for me i'm a ripple effect for her so this is um dedicated to her it's dedicated to rose to this beautiful woman um, she's an elderly lady who lives in the Gramercy area and she's just legendary and she, and she's really impactful. And so I told that story. I told that story of that magical night of being in New York city. And I was with my friends and we were, we were like, um, coming out of the Rose bar at the Gramercy hotel. And like, they have all these amazing iconic paintings and vibes. And it's just like such a cool space. And we, we came out and there's a garden and there's a, there's the Gramercy park and it's like a, um, it's like a very intimate small park and there's a key to get in and you have to have a key and Rose, she has the key to go in there and she, you know, wanted to give us a tour of the beautiful garden and it was just a really magical night. And so I actually recorded it, um, almost two years ago. And because of this standstill um, space and time, Nikki was able to catch a beat and produce it in its drum and bass. And he just tailored it in such a way where it's angels and rainbows. And I said that message then, but I just feel like you can you can put something out there, but like sometimes, you know, you have to add different spices and turn the heat up and down and something's cooking in the back. And it's not just like, oh, here it is. And it's out. Sometimes it's a birthing process of working on something for 10 years or 30 years or five or two months or one week. But this in particular, um, my, I was at a friend's giving and, um, I like just got back to New York city after not being here for a long time. And I, one of my friends, um, Joey Zugzog, he, um, was so saying all these amazing things to me and, um, it really inspired me and I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to record. And I did. And, and that's what that recording's from. And, um, and, um, so now it's like, we, we are where we are and it's, the first responders, it's the people in service, it's the people who we judge, it's the people who we look down upon, it's the people who, you know, are less fortunate, it's the people who there's guilt and shame and uh, all these different emotions and st emotions and stereotypes and stigmas put around it. And I feel like those are just being broken from the old concrete now and the educational system, like Mind Valley, Vision created Mind Valley, and it's like a new platform of education. And he's been on the train for a long time. And now, like, the whole system, like Darwin, like 200 years ago, you know, the theory of Darwin and, and, you you know, our, our evolution has been, um, you know, running on that same platform, which just came crashing down because it 
definitely was heading south for a long time. And, you know, I mean, the, the amount of, um, you know, animal life in, um, in the oceans and we just watched the tiger king and it, there's only 4,000 tigers in the wild there's 5,000 to 10,000 uh, that are captivated by human beings and and if you watched it you saw how how they're treated and so you know our species is dying and it's it's like us we are created by the same you know organisms and we're heading south really fast so this is a big wake up call for everyone to consciously you know uh, epigenetics to rise above the Darwin theory and, and what we've been taught, you know, fast forward, they, um, Bruce Lipton was calling it myths, you know, they were just myths because they were ideals of ideals of what could be, but the, it was a split. It was a split between science and spirituality. And actually it's not a split where we've always been together as whole. So, so this is for people in service and for doctors and nurses. And lastly, I just want, want to say about this um, with everything I've been seeing and reading, you know, in brush strokes from here to, from here to there, there's this young um, woman who uh, was a nurse and she was a singer and uh, here in New York and, and uh, she saw what was happening. And so she, you know, decided she wasn't doing, um, she wasn't being a nurse anymore, but she went back to the hospital to, to help out. And she sang this song, I forget the song, but she sang this beautiful song and they were playing it in the hospitals and, and everyone was dancing and the nurses, they were just bursting with joy and hugging and just being so happy by dancing to this song that was an empowering song that we saw on Lady Gaga's Global Citizen um, a couple weeks ago. It was, it was the opening song actually. Um, it's a really powerful song. And, um, and so when, and then, and then it showed her singing and it made me so happy. And this was before like the song was even done. And I was just, I just thought, wow, I'm like, if people, you know, had this playing at hospitals and the nurses and the doctors and the patients heard angels and rainbows and they had this hope and this excitement, I'm like, I'm like, I, I got excited about those possibilities. And, um, and so that's kind of like the heart of it. Um, yeah. It sounds like we need to get some hospitals to some like hospital administrators or something to, it, we need to get the song in front of them. So can that you they help can, me do that? That would be I, great. We I use, don't, I don't know any hospital administrators, but let me think about that. Uh, you know, if I, if I know, if I can think of a way to do that. We also, if you could send me any emails or like just support, just send me some links to hospitals and I'll send the information. But that would be awesome, even if you know, yeah, that'd be really cool. That, that's yeah, a really smart idea. I mean, because um, they what they have is they have what they call patient care specialists, and these are people who are whose job it is to see to the needs of the patients. Like when when Rich was doing. Um, hospital clowning. He was actually going in my, when Rich, my husband, for anybody who's listening, who doesn't know who he is, I talk about him all the time. Hi. So I can't imagine people wouldn't, but when he, he was doing hospital clowning and they had these, these people, they were there, the, the clowns were there to work like with kids in, in, in the oncology wards and things like that. And the patient care specialists are the people who worked with the clowns to make sure that all of that stuff got done. So if, if like off the top of my head, I'm like, we need to find out who the patient care, patient care specialists are and say, this is a song that was, you know, written and produced in, in honor of, of the, the hospital staff, but also the patients themselves, you know, to give them hope. So I'm wondering now, like who, who, if you're out there and you're a patient care specialist at a hospital, get in touch with us because they need to hear the song. Um, so yeah, I'm now, I'm now, now my, 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 my brain is, is uh, the rotors are turning. We'll see what we can do. So <laughs> Okay. I appreciate that. Um, Ariana Huffington wrote me an email this morning. I was so happy to hear her email. Um, cause I wrote her, I sent her the song. I told her about the message and she's like, my dear Kiriaki, she's like, what a beautiful song. And she actually said she just launched a campaign with Harvard and, um, for the first responders. And she wants me to publish an article on thrive. So I'm going to do that. And, um, she said she wants to help get the spread of the, the music and the message. So, um, I'm going to just make the article and then send it to her and, 
um, any way I can be a part of that that campaign she was telling me about would be really, really awesome. Oh, yeah, that's terrific. I love it. And and what I would love to do is right now, before we forget, where can people hear the song? Where can people hear it? Uh, well, it's streaming everywhere. It's streaming everywhere. So, yeah, but you can just go to uh, Chinakis.com. You know, my last name, it's C-H-O-N-A-C-A-S.com, Chinakis.com. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's on, it, like, it's so cool. It's even on TikTok and it's on Instagram. So if you type in the music, you could type in Angels and Rainbows and it's really colorful and bright. And it was released by um, us, the Sophisticated Psychos. Yeah, if you have a if you have a story um, on like Instagram, for example, you can type it in when you type in the music, and you can post a funny story or something like that um, on on social to show love because it's for a good cause. It's it's clean, it's fun, and we all need. I don't care how gangster, how cool you are, we all need angels and rainbows in our lives. Yeah, and then you can just hashtag if you want to like do a, vo a, fo a photo or a video and singing, dancing to it, and then just hashtag us or like send it to us, and we'll repost it. Awesome! Yeah, that'd be that would be great. Um, so go and listen to the song. You will dance. You will just throw your arms up, and you will you dance. I guarantee it. It's definitely you can't just sit there and and, and do nothing. That you hear. No, I I, I couldn't. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when it's your own music and then like, like we're just in a moment and like Nikki just turned it on and I was just like, and I just started dancing like the I, the vibes were just like, it just makes your energy move inside like the vibes like your body. <laughs> Yeah, that and and that's really I mean that was my experience of it too when I was listening. That's why I listened to it like five times in a row. Um and that's funny I, that you said that because it literally it's like you listened you listened five times in a row because like you have to like wrap your brain around it because it's a whole journey, you know what I mean? It's like yeah, it's like what better time to teleport than now? Like I I wrote this, I I recorded this two years ago, and it's like we're social distancing, like well, physical distancing actually. Um, but it, imagine, I mean, I think some of us are teleporting right now real i think some of them are teleporting and it's like imagine like really elevating and teleporting you know absolutely and and that idea of um you know it's it's not enforced alone time but it's definitely time to to think to to dream to build to create and and something that will elevate you that calls you and i think that's that's kind of what i resonated with in angels and rainbows there's a sort of a call to elevate yourself in the song that's what i felt mm -hmm. awesome yeah yeah and then also the it's like um you know um the part where it's like you know um high functioning high functioning high functioning high functioning you know it's like there's just been so much wonderful talk about mental health and the the well-being of our um you know our thoughts and the energies uh, in our in our brain because it it navigates our our exterior and our interior and so to be you know speaking on that topic it's like with this fast paced, chaotic, busy world and running on all these grids and systems that aren't working. And it's like, people are like highly depressed or, or high, they have autism and they're, they're functioning in ways that, that don't align with like who we are as human beings. And I can speak to that myself. So it's like, it was like a real love and a shout out to the people out there who are, you know, having mental struggles and have, have who have mental times who feel who feel things who feel things like very deeply and you can't express it because you know um it's it's an energy and it's something that you're not seeing it's something that you're hearing about like gratitude and pleasure um and passion so it's it's not like oh it's a chair or it's a table or it's something matter where you can obtain it into your physical hand and so um it's really neat that um you know for people who understand music knowing that it's the angels god's angels and the poets through the sound words and vibrations and it changes the thought pattern and the thought form inside the brain it soothes the energy so that it's and it makes you dance you know so it's it's a, it brings you it busts it busts through all the the negative 
whatever energies that are that are going on in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a way to move it around, you know. Sure. And you know, the science backs it up in a way. And and uh, the, what I'm talking about right now is violins, for example, wood, well, instruments made out of wood uh, in general, but violins specifically is what I know since I'm a violinist. If you're not, if you're, if you're, when you're playing one, the wood vibra vibrates on a molecular level, right? The wood of the violin. And if you don't play it for a while, the wood, the quality, the, the timbre, the sound will die unless you vibrate the wood. That's what keeps oh. a violin alive. And so what they say is if for some reason you're not going to play your violin for a while, put it by a, a music speaker so that the, the, the vibrations of the sound from the speaker can vibrate that wood on a molecular level or else the violin, the quality of it will just die. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's living. It's living. Yeah, it's it living. is. And those mm -hmm. vibrations are they, are, they change things. And I think it's interesting what you said, Kiriaki, about the the transformation and we are we're all we're all being changed in one way or another right now because because we have to be you know and some of us come to this change and it's going to be jarring and it's going to be awful and some of us come to it and it's a real opportunity to to extend ourselves in kindness and to extend ourselves in creativity to to everybody, but especially to the people who most need it and who are who are having such a tough time, like the first responders and, and hospital staff and people who work in grocery stores who are making sure we keep getting food on our tables. You know, I mean, it's it's incredible, yeah. that we, you know, and everybody is doing what they can do. And I think it's so wonderful that you both decided to to do what you can do. And your offering is something that's so uplifting. So thank you for that. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, also, I'd like to say, and we're so lucky to have a system, you know, it's like the systems that aren't working crash down and those are changing, but there are system in, systems in place. And I'm grateful for the systems that are in place to be able to have, you know, the tech set up and the, the people and, and the, the, the correlation of the, the organized business to bring attention to you know the people and, and mm -hmm. service in a way that's a uh, better quality you know it's better quality and and i see different companies now partnering up so it's like because it's just so much consumerism it's too much it's so like draining like going to buy toothpaste it's like there's 40 different brands of freaking toothpaste it's like you know what i mean it's like <laughs> enough I with do. the junk enough with the junk so i think now it's just we're really gonna eliminate some waste here Finally, you know, oh, like oh, we need to real, real, we're eliminating like or it's just happening. We're just eliminating the waste and people are just really waking up in new, beautiful ways. I, I hope that you're right. I really do, because what I'm honestly concerned about and I'd love to hear both of your thoughts on this is that once things get back open and I'm not going to say get back to normal because I don't know what normal would look like. Mm -hmm. But once things open up again. I, I'm a little concerned that, that, that there's going to be a real push to go back to what it was like before. What are your thoughts on that, both of you? What do you think? Um, people, life, the way, I mean, it's my personal belief that as humans, we keep on having a lesson in our life until we learn it. So even, even, if, even if people do go back to their old ways life is going to keep on happening until people stop focusing on the fear they stop believing all of these things that distract us and and man-made concepts that make us hate our our neighbors and strangers and people who don't look like us and 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 tell us that people who do look like us can get away with with more than people who don't and and that there's going to keep on being instances that that drive people into connectivity and 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 remove these other things so even even if it does go back to how it is which it won't it's going to keep on happening because people i mean regardless of what your political beliefs are the fact that that people started questioning the validity of of the news um on 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 a massive scale so we're we're in a very curious place and curiosity breeds you know new creations and inventions so mm -hmm. just I, I challenge anyone who's listening right now who's frustrated at themselves or at anyone 
to just stop and just say like, I want to do something. I want to do something. And this is what I've always wanted to do. And I'm going to go online and I'm going to learn how to do it and, and, and just, and just operate from, from that place. And if, and if your whole neighborhood right now is saying that the world's going to end and only focus on yourself and only believe that, you know, that there is greatness coming out of this. So if, if you don't, if you don't want to be in the relationship with the person that you're in, then you're finally ending it. And if you really do want to be with the person that, that you are in a relationship with, you're going to start saying, I need to make this relationship work. And, and we've been doing that. And it's, and it's been amazing. Oh my God. It's it sounds amazing. like a Tony Robin, a Tony <laughs> Robbins intervention. And I haven't even, I've known about Tony Robbins for years and I haven't ever gone to any of his seminars, but I did watch his documentary. I could only imagine, but yeah, it's like a, it's like a Tony Robbins intervention, but you don't need a crisis. You don't need a death. You don't need something horrific to happen to make the change. That's when a lot of people wake up and do, but it, we don't need that to happen. But, um, so, you know, um, there's subtle ways of doing it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's easier said than done too. <laughs> and it's like, where do I start? So you just start with taking one step and then taking two steps. And, you know, for me, I, I, when I was a kid, I just, I had a list of 10 things I would do for my business and 10 things I would do for my personal. So I had like 20 things to do a day. I, and you know, it could be like, okay, make 15 calls. That's making 15 calls or sending 15 emails. That's sending 15 emails or like, like, um, having tea, having soup, taking a bath, manicure, pedicure, or just like in times. And now it's, um, you know, yep, taking a nap, let it, let this up, old stuff's coming up. This too shall pass. I'm feeling it in my body. It's old energy. It's old, it's old stuff. That's not me that I learned that I learned from, from what I saw or what I experienced, but it's not me. So being aware of the epigenetics of rising above that gene of mine and um, saying, oh, I'm going to have something warm for my tummy. Then I'm going to have some hot tea and then I'm going to uh, take a hot shower and then I'm going to take a nap. And these are all loving, soothing things to do when not, when, you know, when, when feeling out of balance from your highest potential, but you know, just making a list of 10 things you can do for your personal, um, you know, calling your mom or writing a letter to someone you haven't talked to in a while, call them, write, write a letter. Um, you know, so are you in them fun things like watching movies, watching TV shows, uh, that's ed that's ed education, but it's also relaxing my body, but it's also entertaining, but it's also like I can watch the tone of the show and the actors and the set design and the clothes and animes and voiceovers and the different, you know, new cartoons that are out. We just, we just saw a bunch of really cool ones on Netflix that I want to marathon in the next couple of weeks. So it's always, always in action, you know, but, but being, but being in action. So it's not like we're not human doers. Like I don't want to do, 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 because then it's like, I'm, I'm putting, then I like literally today, like I was so excited. I only slept five hours and I was so excited to get up because like I wanted to like, you know, partake in so many different things. But then when I got in and I sat down at my desk, I was just like, I felt this drain and I just wanted to cry because I don't want to fight and I don't want to do, and I don't want to approach it in the old way. So I literally got up, I went to a private area with the lights off and I let out a little cry and I was able to meditate. I meditated. I came out, I spoke with my grandma, my Aya, and then I sat down and I approached it in a new way, in a, in a more Gentile way. And I knew I had to do something to get it done. It was something with finances. It was, you know, this thing. And then after that, I was, um, you know, and then I was on my way of doing things. And, and here we are. So it's just really uh, tuning in and checking in with, with where I'm at, where, where my intellect is. And uh, knowing of how much I can take on. And being okay if if I can't take things on, you know, and just resting. And again, we come back to that idea of self-awareness. You know, you're doing, it sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like you're doing what you need to when you need to. 
you know, it's staying aware of that and going, I need time alone. I need a cup of soup. I, I, it would be good for me to talk to my grandmother, you know, and, and really it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot of self-awareness. It takes a lot of self-knowledge to know that about yourself and to maintain that level of frequency, I guess. It's a, it's a, it's a vibrational thing for me. It's like checking in with yourself and going, I'm uncomfortable or, or I'm happy yeah. or whatever. That knowing that and paying attention to it is really important. How do you two do that for each other? Do you ever, do you ever find that the other person when you're, I, you know, sometimes Rich and I are in conflict and one of us will go, I need 20 minutes. I need to go for a walk or I need to go sit and meditate. Or I, I will often say, I need to go play the guitar. You know, that's my, <laughs> that's my thing. Do you ever do that for each other? Do you ever suggest those kinds of things? How does, how do you play that out for yourselves and each other? Uh, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. We, we are very like, especially now there's been a lot of space between the two of us. Um, and so when we come together, like we have meals and we do things or like she'll have an idea and I'll bounce an idea or like I'll have an idea and she'll listen to like a song that I'm working on. But for the most part, like, you know, for example, when um, at the beginning of this whole thing, um, when we both, when I moved in with Kay, um, the first couple weeks was really, for me like constant meditation um i've been doing a lot of studying on on non-traditional like healing and transformation and and so there was a lot of that and the same thing for her where she's doing her own thing and 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 again healing now now is an amazing time to heal now is an amazing time to really you can you can sign up for a free month of therapy um you know like you can you can find all different types of information online and and so better help yeah, is so the like, company so the the commonality between the two of us was like all right cool like we're together and we're in this however at the same time you know my time your time it's it's sacred and and so you know i'm going to be and this is both of us saying this to one another having an agreement of you know, like I'm going to be focusing on myself. I'm going to be spending a lot of time in solitude. Um, I I love you. I care about you. I really want to make sure that you know, like when I come out of this thing, when when we all come out of this thing, that that I'm better from it. Instead of to your point, having that thought of like, oh well, I'm just gonna go right back to doing everything exactly the same way and think like people are trying to like break out and go back to work. Like no, mm -hmm. like you've always wanted to have a vacation you have always wanted to stop working what what is it like 80 percent of people don't like the job that they do so stop and 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 heal and heal and heal but they don't know what they're doing because the thing is they're wanting to bust out to get back to work to get back to living someone else's dream because that's what they were taught and that's what they know and that's all they know so they're they're doing their nine to five jobs or whatever jobs and they're going and they're working for someone else helping helping the system and helping other people helping the system's dreams come true but the, that that's all crashing down that's like a lot of it has is uh crashed down it's not working and you know people it's a way for people to blame to say i i didn't get what i wanted it's you know it's really looking at the inner child and and um healing that wounded inner child and it's like okay well can you get more frank and raw about healing that wounded inner child it's like if nick to nick's point of what he was saying is like people are wanting to bust out and like get back to work to the old ways well there's no old ways there's no going it's the, it's not it's not happening like even when the system runs in the world like it's not gonna go back like it's you know some things that work and don't work well you know life is going to continue on but there's no, there's no, there's never ever going back to way, the way things were. Like it's been hit. Like it's, it's on a world level, like everyone knows, like, you know, and it's, it's going to, it's going to keep going and it's going to rebuild and, and then there's going to be new evolution from it. But like when Nick was saying, like, get back and run to, to what, to, to the nine to five that you don't like the weekly or monthly check that you're getting and that you're exhausted because you're, 
being yelled at or not respected or validated in your work. Like, and then, but now's the time, like if you're home to, but you know, some people don't have the leisure of being in solitude. Some people don't have the leisure of that because they have children or maybe they're in an abusive relationship or they're not in a safe space to be able to create that from for themselves. So, so that's difficult and that's very difficult. And I understand that because um, I've seen it and I've made my own choices in life. So the, I can honor myself in this moment because I created the base that I created here and I set it up here. You know, it took me three months. I created a full production studio in New York city with an amazing view of the park and with the morning sunrise. And I created this space for myself because I wanted to set myself up to take care of myself because who's going to take care of you if, 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 if you don't take care of yourself. So I set up this whole space and I'm so grateful to set myself up in such a way. Like it just, it wasn't handed to me. I manifested it. I worked for it. Like I yearned for it. I, I had it in the palm of my hands. I made choices and I went on journeys and then full circle, you know, where I am now, I created this lovely space here to be able to sit here and have this conversation with you, you know, and so then now I am in a place where I can be in a creative space to really slow down and do my inner work and my inner journey of my inner healing of myself, because I feel the drag, I feel the heaviness in different parts of my body. And then I go to those places and I, you know, nourish it so I can, you know, be at my optimal self and keep expanding and growing and learning, you know, so it's, it's, it's difficult to heal if you don't have, you know, the space to heal. But like someone said the other day, like, you don't, you don't need your gongs in the perfect meditation room with the candles lit and everything. So, rah rah feeling so great and then you know and then you're meditating because you can be out in and then and, and then you can be out in public and uh, a, a bus can come in, in, in past you and you have to be able to use your intuition then so it doesn't matter if you're in a really comfortable place or in a place that's uncomfortable there's no better time to you know like nick was saying sit with some of the questions and there's sometimes you don't know what questions to ask it took me a long time to know if i was asking the right questions and i was confused you know so um hay house is amazing abraham ham hicks on youtube is amazing and just put them on playlists and listen to Dr. Joe Dispenza and listen to, you know, type in top scientists of the world and uh, listen to Shaman Dirk's podcast, Joe Dispenza's podcast, Luke Story's podcast, Ben Greenfield's podcast, my podcast, She's All Over the Place, is all this podcast, The Creative Mindset. So to keep us evolving and moving forward and learning and my favorite thing to talk about is Overdrive. Um, you know, so Isolde, you know about Overdrive. Um, the app you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I make liberal use of overdrive every mm -hmm. month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our viewers can download that for free and listen to, listen to audiobooks of autobiographies, scientists, doctors, abuse, uh, you know, Darwin, whoever, I mean, whatever interests you to start, just t the time is now to really, um, wake up and make, um, better choices, you know? So that's, that's kind of like what we're doing over here on a daily. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, Nick's in one room. I'm in another room. We have respect for one another. Like you said, we'll have meals together. And then um, if I have my headphones on, he has his headphones on. We're both doing things, you know, and then we, and then we, we do things together. So we kind of, we're blocking them out and like, okay, six hours over here, six hours over here. And then for two hours, we're going to get together and do this. And okay, we've both had enough now, or, you know, it's time to have a meal. So, yeah, we're working things in rotation. And I think that's a fabulous way of doing it. You know, you're making space for each other to be solo and then you come together and you become a duet. And then, you know, it's like playing an instrument. Sometimes one instrument plays, sometimes the other. And sometimes they come together and they play together. And that it sounds like what you two are doing, uh, na navigating that really beautifully. And it's uh, it's commendable. <laughs> That, yeah. that it's it's not easy you know we're we're living in new york we're not we're not living in 
huge apartments or huge houses or whatever. So when you're when you're in that space and you're kind of going, okay, you know, we, we could be on top of each other and we could be not respecting each other's space and each other's needs, or we can be. We can we can make space for each other. And I think that's yeah, wonderful. I think now if, if if anything to anyone who's listening, like now is the time where I, I feel like if you're living with your family or with your wife or husband or partner, whatever, you can have a conversation to be with them. Like, listen, I'm inspired. Um, I just really want to get to know myself better. So like, I love you, but you know, maybe we're going to be talking less or maybe you'll see me less, but like, let, you know, like just give me this time because like, I care about you and I, and I love you. You know what I mean? Like now, now is a great, is a great time for that. Instead of just like jumping on each other's throats and being like, I want to be outside. No, I want to be outside. This is frustrating for me. And my frustration is more important than your frustration. Like, no. But they have to, but they have to go through all that bull crap that, too. To you you have to go through, you, agreement. you know, if, yeah, yeah, that, that, and there's different ways of communication. There's different ways of what people were taught and, and what they know and what they don't know. So there has to be all that immature, ignorant fighting back and forth, blaming, but rah, rah, bull crap. Cause it's a part of the growing and the stretching and the relationship with each other and being mere reflections because it's like, it's like if you have two pillows next to each other for, you know, three years on a couch, those pillows think they, be, you know, they belong together on the same couch. So then when you start like ch changing the colors or inter, you know, doing different things, the pillows like, Hey, what are you doing? Like, like the, you've been like sitting like this the whole entire time. It's like, they think that they already know the person so well, but that's, that's like the worst mistake one can make. Cause it's like, I'm, I'm just, it's fine we've been sitting together for a year or two but like i'm just getting to know you like i'm i'm just getting to know myself so the thing is dismantling like already knowing one another even if it's been you know 30 years <laughs> um and um there's that there's that that process back and forth but not only with the boundaries physical boundaries but mental boundaries we were on a skype with shaman Dirk a few weeks ago and and he did this uh, Akashic reading, you know, he like read, like read some of my, um, like went in and read some of my records and, um, and he, I'm an empath and he blatantly told me, he's just like, you know, like your mental boundaries, because like, I will be doing what I'm doing, but then I'll be thinking about Nikki and caring for Nikki and did Nikki do this and did he do that? And he has to do this. And it, because he's so close to me and I care for him and I love him. So I'm thinking, I'm like, Oh, did Nikki do this? And I need to stop that inner critic. I need to stop that, that mental boundary so I can take all that and focus on, you know, writing articles on thrive global, because that's my passion. That's what I want to do. You know, calling and talking to someone I want to speak with and enriching something for my own life, and my own value, which will bring more value to our relationship and into the planet. So um, I had to really check in with myself recently about like, like calling myself out on my mental boundaries, you know, because in my head, I'm like going nonstop, you know, but right. it's, but, it, but that energy, it doesn't matter if it's good or bad or worry or excitement. It's just, it's just energy. So it's like really, um, shifting that focus, that attention, that energy, and really putting it into an area that could, you know, keep going in the direction of, you know, more self-love and compassion. Sure. And, and frankly, I really believe that the more you love yourself and the more compassion you have for yourself, the more you are able to love and have compassion for your partner. So that's just how it is, you Definitely. know? So, and, and when we show that, when we, when we know that about ourselves, we are more capable of showing that selflessly to our partner, you know, that's, and, and I, I, I've all, Rich and I've been together. It's funny. You said 30 years, Rich and I've been together almost 30 years, 20, over 28 years. And it's interesting because on some levels, because we've both, we, we didn't stay still from 1992, you know, we've kept growing. So because of that, it's an ever evolving process, getting to know each other over again all the time because we're different every day, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? So oh, there, yeah. there's a lot to be said for, for remaining and retaining beginner's mind. And I feel in some ways like I'm at the beginning of my relationship, even though it's already 28 years old, you know, it, it can drink and then some, I guess. So, yeah. um, so I, I, I know, I know that we could talk forever because <laughs> I love talking to you, but I don't want to take up so your entire evening. Um, I would love to find out from you, is there, 
is there anything that you want the people who are listening, someone, especially someone who is, who might be feeling uh, alone or who might be feeling like they don't have anyone to care for or who no one cares for them? Is there, is there a bit of guidance that either one of you would like to give to that person? Um, I would say if anyone is feeling like down right now, I would say just simply feel it, be okay with feeling it, know that it's going to pass. Um, there's a lot of different people that are going through a lot of different things. Um, I think, I think the best, the best thing to do is just when we feel these things kind of lean into it instead of trying to ignore it and, and really letting this be a time is as much stuff as we talked about right now. Um, we're, we're taking it very slow. Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of regards. And I think now is a good time for people who are, especially more for people who are really wanting to get outside and wanting to do things to just really slow down. And, you know, and I think for those of us that are in great places right now, I think we need to maybe when we have some free time, go through your phone and, and, and just have a conversation with somebody we haven't talked to, um, in a minute we're all in this together today could be great for you tomorrow could be terrible you know so like we take it we take it day by day um you know and and constantly constantly have a have a conversation with yourself to remind yourself of what you do have even if even if you have a one one room that you're sharing with eight other roommates and your and your room doesn't have windows say like i have a room there's people right now that don't even have a room you know right. so like and there's people that have mansions that feel like they're in a prison so um i i think i think gratuity right now is um as we come up to seven o'clock where you're going to start hearing gratuity i think now's <laughs> the time to be grateful as grateful as possible I, I agree. Gratitude is, I do a, a, a morning practice every day where I list three things I'm grateful for. And I take the time to really feel each thing I'm, I'm grateful for. And it can be something right. small. Hold you know? on, we're going to give you something loud here. Okay, here we go. Is it happening? Yeah, it's happening. Uh, ah, <laughs> I love it. There it is. I love it. If you don't know what you're hearing right now, that is that is the people of New York City being grateful for the first responders, the medical personnel, and everybody who's working so tirelessly to make sure that we all stay as healthy as possible. And uh, you can't hear it from me because I'm in my studio, but outside our apartment window, people are doing the same thing every night at 7 p.m. And I think it's probably happening other places too. I don't know. But uh, it's so important just to remember that we can all raise that energetic awareness and we can all raise a little bit of energy to show that gratitude. It's amazing uh, that we that we have the opportunity to do that, that we have the opportunity to show these people how grateful we are and how thankful we are for the incredible work that they're doing. <laughs> it's still going. Oh, yeah. yeah definitely. Uh -huh. So I'm coming, I'm coming back inside. No, no, no. no. It's, a, it's, it's all right. I, I, I'm just like, I actually don't know if this is something that's New York city only, or if it's something that's, no, it you know, started in Italy. okay. So there you go. See, this is something that's worldwide. And I just am, I have, I have been trying to stay away from the news a little bit because I, I wanted to sort of go inward. So, Same. yeah. So, so yeah, there, it's just, you know, it's a thing. Um, and oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What, what I was going to say is um, um, in respect to what Nikki was saying, like mm -hmm. about like allowing the emotion to come, sitting with it, knowing it'll pass. And then, OK, and then and a step further is knowing the emotion is going to come, it'll pass. 
But like an ocean wave, it could come back 30 seconds later, a minute later, three minutes later, 30 minutes later. It's going to be like an emotional wave. So it's going to come, it's going to hit, you're going to sit with it. It's going to be there. It's going to seep away slowly or it's going to be gone. And then you're going to be great. And then it's going to come back. And then you sit with it and you recognize that's what it is. And then it's going to go away. So it's, that's the process of, of sitting it when it comes. Mm -hmm. Um, the last thing I guess I would like to leave with, um, would be, um, well, I'll just go for it right now because this is what I'm doing. Um, um, I would suggest, um, reading, Googling, um, quotes on peace, quotes on love, uh, the best quotes in the world and just kind of getting uh, immersed in language, poetry, um, creating some new sounds, words um, to start creating a new life and way we want to see ourselves and how we want people to see us and stick by those things. So like one I have is um, sometimes angels are just ordinary people that help us believe in miracles again. And that's by Anonymous. And then there's another one by Bruce Lipton. The whole world is a mental illusion. And then here's another one. There's a higher court. There is a higher court than the courts of justice. And that is the court of conscious. It supersedes all other courts. And that's um, from, who's that from? Gandhi. Yeah. Gandhi. Oh, that's a, that's a good one to, to end on. All right. So I don't want to, as I said, I don't want to keep you too much longer, but I do. I know because we can keep talking forever and I would love for you to come back on the show and do more, talk more. Um, tell hey, me. Nikki, s s sing us out with the, with the verse, man, with the freestyle. Bust out with the Well, wait, 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 freestyle. wait. Don't do that yet because I want, I want the people who are listening to know how to find you. So tell, yeah. tell that first before. The sophisticated psychos everywhere. Yep. Instagram, Facebook, Gmail, all social. TSP Lifestyle for Twitter. TSP Lifestyle. Yeah. Just the sophisticated psychos. Reach out. Say hi. Subscribe. Yeah. Subscribe on all of our platforms. Absolutely. Get in touch. That's it. You know, one of the things, Nikki, that I've been that I've that I've just loved seeing on Instagram. If you're listening to this and you follow, well, follow Nikki. Follow Yo, Kitty, Nikki Kitty, Scorpio. Yo, Nikki Scorpio and Ch at Chinakis everywhere. And um, but but what 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 I love I love the posts that you have, Nikki. That are, hey, if you're if you're not doing well, find me. I reach out. I'm here. And I just think that's so beautiful that you are just offering. Here I am. I'm here to listen. I'm here to help. Uh, that's, that's lovely. Thankfully, we have friends of all different walks of life. And, and we've learned through that rich or poor, that emotions are emotions. And when you feel alone, uh, that's that is one of the um, most challenging things and, and emotions to feel. No one should ever feel alone. You are never alone um please definitely you always you always have friends over here with the sophisticated psychos so there you go so nikki w are you willing are you willing yeah, to sure. all I'm right a really really cool one actually it's called trust and 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 uh, i'll give you a, a chorus in the ah chorus awesome it goes like this my love is unconditional my heart is loyal, I'm always on your side. I'm always rooting for you, you can let it all go. I can assure you that you got a warrior. Baby, I adore you, even when it's hard. I'm always staying faithful. I've been asking God if you can send an angel, cause I'm broken home, broken hearted. Too many dear friends when to leave the party. So your heart's like mine now, I keep it guarded. My love is unconditional and that's regardless. Yeah, when life is started, this show I started. So I never lost this focus on a target. Oh, oh, oh. I give you all my love, but it never is enough. Maybe I'm giving too much, growing up we had it rough. I know you've been through too much, but tell me, can you trust? 
Cause you cannot spell trust. Yeah, without spelling us. Woo! That was great. I love it. That was amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, oh, I have chills. This is that was wonderful. Thank that was you, great. I was crying to it yesterday. She's yeah. Like, I'm like, let's listen to the trust song. He, he's I'm so proud of him. Just like literally within like the last four weeks, he has recorded, I think, 12 new songs. Like he's wow. just on fire. But yeah, uh, I'm, I'm producing them all. Um, oh, so after this episode, if you want. Um, I'll send you the MP3. You can just um, play Angels and Rainbows right on your podcast. I, I, well, do I, I thought I already had it, but if I don't, please send it. Yeah, I would love it. I would love it. That would be, that would be a terrific ending. So yeah, yeah, please. And I'll add it to the end of the, of the show so that people can hear it right now. That'd be great. Nice. All right, yeah. cool. Thank you. Thank you both. So Kiria Kichanakis, Nikki Scorpio, two Scorpios living together in New York City and creating a better world right from one place to everywhere. I'm so grateful that you are on the show. Thank you so much. We're Love grateful you. for you. Thanks, Isolda. Thanks to no one. Big, big hugs and kisses to you. You have been listening to the Creative Mindset Podcast, where the last two hours, if you can believe it, have been spent on everything from the vision of your life to the vision for the world to the idea of mental health to rooting your relationship into an emotional foundation that takes years, decades, and sometimes even lifetimes to build to a real celebration of being alive and being artistic and creating. This is the time. Now is the place. Let's get it done. This is Isolde Trachtenberg for the Creative Mindset Podcast. I send you all of my love, and I'll see you next time.
Thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you being here. Today's episode was produced by Azolda Trachtenberg and is copyright 2020. Today's music was Kevin McLeod's Ave Marimba, brought to you by Creative Commons License 3.0 and Summer Fashion by Alexander Shemaluev. As always, please remember this is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Past performance does not guarantee future results, although we can always hope. Until next time, this is Isolde Trachtenberg, and I send you all of my love.